That was Bjorn uh, Pierre. Love that track. And no grudge. Uh, now, I met up with, well, I didn't meet up with him, but we had an interview uh, with him last week. He is Trinidadian. Uh, well, he's from Trinidad. And he is an amazing singer-songwriter. Started uh, playing from the age of six. Uh, just recently had heart surgery. Um, and... Uh, uh, just at the beginning of the pandemic so he talks about challenges there uh, as well so have a look okay i'm here with trinidadian born beyond pierre he is a singer songwriter artist um amazing uh, musician who started playing uh a casio a casio keyboard from the age of six so he, he's he's like a uh, an equivalent to timberland um his <laughs> his song fire drill is making noise uh, definitely in the islands and he joins me today good afternoon or good morning to where you are good morning good morning, good, good morning. thank you for joining us today now um, before we get into it uh, th- your your song fire drill is um, is cooking up a storm where you are now can you uh, let us uh, t- tell us a, a little bit about that song and and the lyrics behind it um, fire drill is a song that was inspired by you know well i am a christian and i believe in prophecy and you know the bible speaks about the end times and signs that will come and see in this whole pandemic that's been going on and even the black lives matter the riots and all these things like it just gets in the tension is rising you know you can see signs unfolding before our eyes and um it was just a song that the lyrics came to me. I the melody, the lyrics just came to me. I did not plan to do any music this at this period, and all the lyrics just came. So it was definitely God who just said, "Yo, I need to say this to these people." So would you say that your music is very prophetic, or or is it songs? Do you write songs for the time and season? How how does it work with you? Because people have different processes. So would you say that you're very prophetic in the way that you write and sing? Yeah, I, I like to say I, I sing sermons. I try to write a sermon and then make it a, a melody. You know, so that way the gospel music would still be a gospel message rather than just saying Jesus loves you. Um, blah, blah, blah. You know, sometimes I try to go a little deeper. So I could, you could actually read the words rather than sing it if you, if you choose. And, and that's, that's my aim. So how would you describe your music? How would you describe your music? Well, yeah, I would, I would say the same thing. That's sermon. Sermon's in song. In, in regards to the style, in regards to the musical style of it? I I don't stick to any particular style. Um, I try to keep my local accent as strong as possible on this song because I believe in identity. And um, But I, I believe I can sing on any um, genre. I try to sing on any genre. So I, I don't tie myself to any one um, style. Now, obviously, the, the world is is in lockdown. We're going to get back to the music in a minute, but the world is in lockdown. And uh, what have you been doing apart from uh, this song? And, and and what are the things that you've learnt in regard in in this lockdown? I've learned that anything anything could change at any moment. You understand? What life has been doing could just flip like that. I've also learned that. You know, don't hold on to anything too strongly down here because you can lose it at any time. A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people lost their, 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 their normal way of living, you know. So I've learned to just live according to, like, live day by day, submit and surrender to God. And that, that's the main lesson I got out of this entire pandemic. And um, what would your plan, because it just seems like things are, slowly getting back in certain parts of the world what i mean what were your plans before the pandemic and and are you hoping to uh continue with those plans before obviously before the pandemic what what were your plans before the pandemic my plans were to uh, i was planning to release an album this year so i was working on the album and um the pandemic slowed that down. Not only the pandemic, I also got sick um, right before the pandemic, so I had to do a surgery, basically, like on my heart. It was wow. crazy. 
So while I was in hospital, the pandemic came and then the lockdown came, so it was just chaotic for me. You know, and um, it, it stopped everything, basically. Wow, so, so you had surgery on your heart. Yes. So what was, um, obviously, because that's something that the, the, the medical uh, doctors would say that's underlying issue. So how did you get through that situation in regards, okay, you've had a heart operation and then uh, on top of that we've got a pandemic. So, man, what was life like then? How, how did you cope? That was that was crazy because I was under immense pressure. It was not comfortable at all. Um, my family couldn't even come to visit in like groups. I had to choose which one family could visit me each day. You know, um, I spent about two weeks, a little over two weeks, at the hospital, and it was it was crazy. But there was a moment where. At the early stages, I had an encounter with God. I never had something like that before, where He literally put me to sleep because I couldn't rest and I had to rest before the sleep. And we actually had a conversation. I never had anything like that in my life before. And He was basically saying that this is the moment where I have to choose whether to save Him for the rest of my life or not. You know, and it just changed my entire perspective on life and that I just had a new love for life, a new love for God, a new love for Christianity. And yeah, that's just me. That's such a powerful testament. And I really pray that, you know, that somebody who, who sees this interview is really touched by this. Now, I want to go back to when you were six years old and you started learning on the, the keyboard. Were you singing as well? I mean, how did you come up with, with melodies at, at such a young age? Okay, well, the melodies, I grew up in a musical family. So my family, they always sing it. Until I thought singing was nothing special. I thought singing came like speaking. <laughs> Until one day I heard someone singing off key and I was like, they have to be playing. Like, that's not for real. And that's when I realized, you know, this thing was a gift. So I started taking it a little more, like understanding that I'm blessed with a gift. And um, my mom decided one Christmas day to just buy a synthesizer. We never had any musical instruments in the house. And I sat down and then to play Mary had a little lamb. And I just taught myself from there. And the, the, the synthesizer came with these features where you could like layer instruments. So basically like a mini producing module. And I started playing keys, then I started playing drums, then I started playing bass, and I make a whole song, and it was like, that was the most amazing thing ever, you know, and it just grew into what it is today. When did you take the gift and, and transition it into the calling? It took a while to transition into the calling, I must say. I had a lot of moments where I would, I'm a, I'm a clown by nature. I like to fool around. Like, I don't take anything too serious. So, with that gift, I started singing like parodies and stuff on YouTube. But, you know, I got a couple of viral moments in Trinidad, even. Um, I think some, some, some songs played across in the US as well. And, you know, to see how the music could reach so much people so quickly that you're walking on the road and people are like, hey, boy, I remember I see you the from this song and that kind of thing, you know? I was like, I was convicted that if God bless you with something, it's only right to give back to him. And I wasn't seeing myself giving back to him, you know, fooling around with music. So I said, you know what? Let me take this thing seriously because I don't want that my life ends and all I put out in this world is, you know, fun and games and just, you know. So that's that happened around, let's say I was about 17, just coming out of secondary school. Yeah, well, high school to some secondary school, yeah. You're listening to the Premier Gospel Church react to you taking the the music and the ministry seriously. Did they support you or, or was there backlash as a young person? No, there wasn't any backlash. Um I think it took some time for them to realize, okay, he is he is actually doing music. Like one song they would say, Okay, he did a song, but like he have a couple songs doing now. So the support is definitely there, especially from the youth. You know, these not to say you'd like the babies, the little children. 
they will put me in a corner of the church and there's me singing this song back to back to back. You know, the parents shut up. The parents met and came because that's all they're watching on YouTube. They're watching Bijan songs. They're watching Bijan songs. They're fed up hearing music. <laughs> um, now, um, the current climate at the moment in the world is, is the Black Lives Matter issue what's your um thoughts on on that i i strongly stand behind it i believe there is a there is a, a problem where a certain race is targeted more than others you understand and it's not to say and a lot of people come out and say all lives matter yes all lives do matter but just as the children of Israel, when there was one tribe that needed help, the entire, all the Israelites would come together to back that tribe in their situation. And I see a lot of people saying, you know, saying it's not a Christian approach. It definitely is a Christian approach because that's how the Israelites would have operated. And we need to stand behind anyone that needs help, any race that needs help, any tribe that needs help, you know. So I, I fully support it and I, I think it's a, a just cause at the moment. So you, you touched on, on a, it's a, a Christian approach. Now, what do you think the church should do in regards to supporting this? There are many things the church can do, um, but the, 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 and the main thing the church should do is be open to help, you know? So any opportunity that comes to assist, the church should be open to help. The, um, could you could you give us um, one of the ways or an idea of one of the ways the church could help? Mm-hmm. Not, not coming to me right now. <laughs> we can help. I'm, I'm sure we can help. Whether it's financial um, help, whether it's uh, you know starting a, a, a something, so we can help in many ways. You know, I, I'm not. I'm my brain just not clicking on the page. <laughs> it's, it's still early over there. It's still early over there. So, um, how can um, people connect with you um, through through social media? You can find me on Instagram at Bijon P Music. That's B J O R N P Music. Um, I'm also on Facebook at Bijon P B J apostrophe O R N space P E I E R R E. Um, that's my two main social platforms. You can also find me on YouTube or any of the streaming platforms. The same name, Bijon P. Um, Bijan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I really appreciate your time and uh, in, in connecting with us on Premier Gospel. Thank you so much, and uh, we really pray uh, the success, more successes in what you do, and especially in, in uh, the song Fire Drill. So thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Premier Gospel, your voice of hope. Premier Gospel. Music for love.